Welcome back, Keepers of the Flame. Oh, happy freaking new moon, Jupiter and Taurus. So while we're in this whole earthly body system that we have going on, um, we're probably going to see a few trends starting to happen. A lot of things coming to light with all this little lovely grand cross energy so young or old external or internal equipment whoever you are take care of your body take care of yourself take care of your health take care of um knowing how to stand up for yourself knowing how to say no um practicing that in real life what feels good in your body and what doesn't. This is more than just like extravaganza plus 10,000. This is, hey, something's not right in my system right now. How do I go about adjusting it so that's not going to be an issue for me anymore? How do I stand up for myself in a firm but respectful manner? How do I firmly tell people, nope, my body doesn't like that. We're not going to do that today. We're not going to do that ever. I don't have time for this. Can we do it on a different day? Pushing that forward, pushing yourself to the front of the line saying, okay, I'm not saying budge. I'm saying that if you don't put yourself first, you are going to be a doormat automatically. Okay, so this self-sacrifice thing is is only going to get you martyrdom to the point of sheer exhaustion and uselessness. That's not happy enough, is it? Nope, it's not. So, um, servitude to what? What are you serving? Is it giving back to you? Is that like a reciprocal relationship? Or are you just pouring everything out and that person's like, okay, hey, bye. Or that situation's like, okay, bye. That company's like, okay, why can't you do more? And you're like, I'm giving it my all. And they're like, well, we need um, 3,000 and 10% from you. But you can't have it because you can't pay me enough money to support that type of situation or scenario. So goodbye. We have to be comfortable saying those things because if we don't respect ourselves, nobody else will. Start asking other people to help you out. Start asking other people to do you favors. Okay? Now, I'm not saying you stop doing other people favors. I'm saying that, yes, you are allowed to ask. And I would highly recommend with the navigational skills that our wonderful society that we've created is going towards um, get some self-defense classes, carry some mace. And again, I don't care how old you are. I don't care if your external or internal equipment is in or out of shape. I don't freaking care. I don't care. I don't care if like you're like 70 year old going into a nursing home. You get yourself some defense material. Did I stutter? I said you get yourself some defense material. Thank you. Okay. So, yep. In nursing homes. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Wherever you find helpless, hopeless people, there you will find the perpetrators. I'm so sick of people being like, oh, teachers are so great. Oh, medical staff is so great. Oh, wherever there's helpless people, you will find predators. Yes, you will find incredible, amazing people who give... Things that some of us are like, I don't even know how. So when we're talking about this narrative, we're also talking about people that are predators and people who are so busy giving that they don't see the predator. They don't see the predatory behavior. That's what I'm saying. Dial it the F back. 
You're letting people around you get away with horrific things. Stop it. Stop. If you can't speak to truth, why bother opening your mouth? So dial it back. Make sure you keep your faculties about you. Because when you're slaving away, thinking I'm doing all this good for someone, but you're not looking at what's actually happening around you and the consequences of whatever it is that may or may not be going wrong, you're going to miss a lot. You're going to miss a whole ton of um, atrocities. You're just going to let it slide because, oh, they're a good person. They're a really nice person. It doesn't matter that the people that they care for end up harmed or, you know, dead or in really bad condition. Yeah, it does matter. It does matter a lot. It doesn't matter that they're a good person to you and that they're help supporting the staff and whatever the heck else it is. If there's a negative outcome there, that person needs to be called out. That person needs to be held accountable. And right now, the situation we have with the judicial system does not support that. It is not a system that uplifts the truth. It's not a system that uplifts positivity for growth and expansion. So it's not only do these people do harm, but now the system is going to perpetuate that harm by putting them in another system with even greater harm in it and then sending them back out into society. <laughs> so this is not a, a system to really F around with. So you get yourself your own faculties. You get yourself your own defense mechanisms. And you, you keep strict boundaries on that. Oh, just this one time. Oh, we're just going to do this once. No, no, we're not. We are freaking not. Mm -mm. Nope. We don't need to go out to the bars and get wasted. We don't need to. You can have a lovely little party in your home quietly or loudly, whatever it is, have, a, have cops called, whatever it is. At least you know the people that are there, right? Unless you're an idiot, invite strangers into your house. In which case, you have a whole lot of other work to do. So when we're talking about this narrative of bringing this forth out into society, it, is, it, it encompasses everything. It's not just one little area of, oh, we're not going to go to the bars or, oh, we're not going to partake in that particular thing over there. No, it's in your home life, in your work life, in your interactions with others, with your neighbors, with your pets, with whoever it is. You have those boundaries. These are the codes of conduct. This is what I'm going to adhere to, and this is what I expect from you. If you can't do that, fine. Then you get uh, on the outside of my precious little onion. It's that simple. You can love people from a distance. You can have a civil phone conversation with people that used to be really close to you or raised you or were in the same house with you while you were being raised. You can do those things. You don't have to be like bleh about your entire life to everybody no you can just be like oh um you know i'm glad you're doing well um love you miss you i gotta i gotta go i have things to do well how are you doing i'm doing great i'm doing so great thank you okay and then you send them love and and, and all the blissful blissiness that you can muster and then you give them one out of touch you just go you can just go. You don't have to, to engage with that behavior because all that's going to do is just siphon you. It's just going to like suck your vital life force energy out of you, which kind of the name of the game in the false light paradigm, you know, whether it be religion, politics, science, <laughs> um, what are the ones that you don't talk about at parties? Religion, science, politics. I think even philosophy at this point. Um, oh, diet. Don't discuss diets either. I eat this way and everybody else should too. Okay, because that's not some sort of freakish religious indoctrination. 
you realize that in each one of the religions, they also have very strict diets as well. That's in there. <laughs> it's like science is looking at religion going, can you hold my mirror and watch this real quick? No, it's it's still uh, like everybody gets to be how, who they need to be with informed consent. This is what your this is the outcome of your decisions and choices. And if they look at you and, and say, okay, I'm cool with it, then move on. Let it go. They have a purpose and a, a fractal uh, little role to fill in the society. And it's your it's not your job to be out there converting people to anything, informing people. Absolutely. Go Lou Dobbs on their ass all day long. Did you know this? Did you know that? Did you know this? Did you know that? Did you know that? Yeah? What are you going to do about it? Nothing? Okay. Move on. Okay. So when we have these like little, hmm, little cues, little jabbies, if you will, you just have to remember to tell yourself, I don't need to partake in this. I can witness it. I can understand it. I can see the subconscious undertow to it. I can see where that pendulum is swinging back and forth. So pulling yourself back from it, saying, okay, I can help myself. I can't help anybody else, but I can help myself. So I'm going to do the things that help myself. So I am better able to help the people that actually depend on me or the people that I am in charge of. Whatever it is, the people that I'm responsible for. If I'm responsible for myself and I'm taking care of myself, then I can better take care of the people that I'm responsible for. The, the little fur babies and all that other good stuff. The plants, the people, all these things, okay? That's what you're in charge of. Plants, pets, people. Okay. Now, you don't have to be in charge of pets. You don't have to be in charge of plants. You can move to an apartment and have no plants and no pets and whatever. That's not a big deal. But if you mow the grass, you're technically in charge of plants. Yeah. You have a little, little like herby pot in your kitchen. You're technically in charge of plants. Right? Yeah. Well, I mean, you could choose not to be. I mean, that's totally. I've had stuff bite the dust repeatedly over the years. Not because I wasn't too taking care, I might have just done it the wrong way. But when you can say, I take full responsibility for myself and my own actions and my own reactions and my feelings and my thoughts about whatever it is, and then move towards the direction that says, hey, I think there's a better way to go about this. I think there's a more sovereign way to produce a, an outcome of my desire not of anybody else's desire because you have a purpose in this vast ecosystem. You need to fill that little fractal. How are you going to do that? By honoring what's inside of you, what's bubbling up. Follow that bliss and that joy. And when I say bliss and joy, I don't mean sex, drugs, and what's the third one? Um, oh, is it rock and roll? Screw that. I'm going for rock and roll. <laughs> I'll follow that all day. Okay, so realizing what actually serves and what doesn't. What's giving you a little bit of pleasure in the moment and what doesn't. Okay. And again, that goes back to uh, gambling, food, gaming, whatever it is. Yeah, it might release a little bit of outlet for a moment, but then what's it going to do for your reality? Taurus is coming in hard and hot <laughs> and all over the place. So what is it going to do to improve your reality? How is it going to make you feel in your body? Okay. Is it going to make you feel more protected, more safe, or is it going to put you at risk? Is it going to make you feel more contained in your body and more empowered? Or is it going to make you lose control of your body? Is it going to facilitate happy, healthy cellular growth and structures, or is it gonna break those down? Okay. And this, it's not just even physical at this point because then it's it becomes a mental thing because this trickles down into everything. 
Okay, so if you're perceiving threats on the outside of you, your body is going to adjust to that. So take care of the threats. Take, taking good food, taking good music, taking good love. Give good love. And honor your emotions, even if you get hot, heated, pissy, whatever. Oh, I'm so mad right now. Don't let anybody tell you, like, oh, you can't feel anger. <laughs> yes, you can. You just have to learn how to function in a way that outlets that anger in a more productive manner rather than all over everybody, right? State your truth. Don't back down from that. Don't let somebody talk you out of your truth and being like you're, you're too sensitive or you're too volatile or you're too blah, 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 blah. You don't need to go off on somebody to prove a point. You can just say, you know what? This is not for me and that's not a, a polite thing to do to people. And they'll, they'll, get, <laughs> they'll get pissed then <laughs> because you're not getting pissed for them. Oftentimes when you're pissed, somebody else is asking you to be pissed because they're pissed. And sometimes it has absolutely nothing to do with you. <laughs> In fact, most of the times that's the case, especially if it's a, a um, um, not even a stranger, even if it's a very close person. If they're pissy, they're gonna uh, they're gonna invite you into their pissiness. Don't accept the invitation. Just stand there and witness. Be like, I see you. I'm not gonna deny this moment right now. You need me to stand here and burn with you because that's how close they are to you. Cool, we'll burn. Let's burn together. That's fine. But I'm I'm not giving in to that. It's not mine. If you need me to stand here and witness with you, I can. But that's all I'm going to do. And if someone is, is asking you to put yourself in danger or in, into a situation that doesn't serve you, you explain to them exactly what the consequences could or might be for their actions. And then you just say, that's not for me. That's not something I choose to do with my being. And then you let them make their choice for themselves and then you just go your separate way. I'm not saying it has to be on a permanent basis, but oftentimes if you're like, I don't want to drink, I don't want to smoke, I don't want to do this, I don't want to do that stuff anymore. Oftentimes they'll just automatically fade away. They'll just fall off because you don't, you don't do those things that connected you, which is really sad because you thought you had an emotional connection or maybe the other person did. And you figured out that was only just, hey, let's get together and get drunk. Um, which, you know, that's that's a case for a lot of people. Like if they took the substances out of the situation, they would not be friends. I think that's going to be a real wake up for some people if you take the the substances out of situations you'll find that oh we really we don't have that much in common we don't see things the same we don't want to do the same things now oftentimes like you thought that you were helping them grow and bringing them like to gardening and whatever else and that's not what they were really into Maybe they wanted to talk philosophy only because you wanted to talk philosophy when they had no interest in it whatsoever. That could be too. Where it's only a thing that they can talk about when they're drunk. In in, in sober life, they're like, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> it's like the, the philosophy light switches on when... Um, When, when they got a buzz. Peculiar people are. But. We still have our, our own sovereignty to keep. So keep your defense. When it comes to the outside world. Keep smart. You don't have to be a dick to everybody. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying keep smart. Keep yourself clean. Keep yourself sober. Keep yourself in alignment. And say, you know what, this doesn't feel like it's for me. I'm going to pass. Or, hey, that really piques my interest. I'm going to drive towards that. I'm going to take my chariot in that direction. 
Start picking the places you want to go and defend yourself from the places that you don't want to go. I have weird people in my neighborhood. <laughs> so, remember that like, yes, while you're seeking joy and bliss and whatever else, where did I put my coffee cup? Oh my God, I lost my coffee. So, <laughs> there it is. So, when you have a situation where you're confronted with something you want or something you don't want, go towards the things you do want. And oftentimes the things that are no longer serving you off and fall away. You don't even have to fuss and fight about it. But if somebody's confronting you with a situation, idea, or something that doesn't sit well, just tell them, look, I'm, I'm going to think about it. I'm going to brace myself and just really think about if I do do this, what's, what's going to happen over here? So if I put the pebble in the pond, how is that going to ripple out into everything? What's it going to look like? What's it going to feel like? What's the consequences of that? And I think remembering that like emotions are so temporary, it's ridiculous that like you'd be best served just not embodying them, but honoring them. How many times we're told not to be emotional? You can be emotional, but not step into the emotions. You can have that sensation in your body and go, okay, I'm feeling hot under the collar. Why am I feeling hot under the collar? Because that person just broke my boundary. They just violated my boundary. How do I assert that back? How do I build that wall back up? Okay. And if you have a repeat offender, what are you going to do? Are you going to keep letting them just like violate your vital life force energy, leech off of it, siphon off of it, be a parasite? Are you going to tell them, look, you need to stand on your own two effing feet and stop sucking off me? There's a lot of people out there that are like that, that just want to siphon off other people because they do not have a creative bone in their body. Or they're, own, they're afraid of their own creativity. They're terrified that they might have something lovely inside of themselves and they just don't want to reach for it. So they're going to either stop other people from getting there or leech off of other people. So that's another boundary that we need to set up. Because that also happens in our body. That happens internally. We forget that all that outside stuff, if we let it, can often manifest inside of us so that's why you keep the healthy boundaries that's why you get the self-defense courses is because when you do it in the physical you do it in the metaphysical as well so and in the esoteric which is just inside your body people have a really difficult time kind of assimilating that your physical body is eso it's in it's within what's happening in your mind is happening in your body is happening in your gut happening in your entire system. So that's why keeping things in check. Now, some people are of the sort where they need to be in the dark. They need to stay kind of um, underneath the surface of things to understand the subconscious level of things. That's just their role. Because if everybody was all false light and ignorant of what was going on in the subconscious, where the subconscious is the, the tragic part of that is people think that, oh, it's just the unseen. Nobody can know it. That's not true. You can see the, you can, it's observable out in the world. So what's happening out in the world is our unchecked subconscious. A lot of people kind of disassociate that or dismember it. Compartmentalize, I think is what psychology calls it but it's not it's not separate from one another that river roll, rolls right in front of our eyeballs so if you have something in your subconscious that's really really needing to be looked at and sat with and integrated you're going to continue to meet those things in your outside world which is why when shadow work comes around you need to you need to get to the grind 
It just has to happen. So if you can set up good boundaries in a physical manner, which this Jupiter Taurus thing is <laughs> definitely going to put your face in right now. With the, 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 the new moon in eclipse. So, uh, I know, I'm trying to register, like, what I've heard astrologically and what I'm experiencing right now, and none of those dots are connecting. I'm assessing it. to. The, I'm, like, looking so hard for it. It's ridiculous. I can't grasp it. <laughs> like, I feel like freaking Nina Simone right now. Birds flying high. You know how I feel. I have no, I, I'm, I, oh, it's not hitting. Unless it hits later tonight and I'm like, oh, it could, I don't know. Right now I'm just, it's, it's, it's nice. It's not like ridiculous, but it's, it's lovely. I don't, maybe I'm just protecting myself or protect, being protected from it. I have no idea. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to think of insight for this this uh, ridiculous amount of astrological weirdness going on, and I'm I'm hmm. I don't know if it's the happiest. I think I think somebody did it. It's the most unhappy, tragic bliss. But on the other side is that bliss, right? So you had your tower moment. You gained your complete and total exposure, enlightenment, and you're like, oh, my Lord, what am I going to do now? And then you just gather up those shards and, like, you stick it right back in that fire and be like, I'm going to make something beautiful with this. And you do. And you do. <sighs> so, yeah, instead of feeling like a sketchy or a mystic, I kind of feel like the crystal right now. Like I just gathered up all those shards after the tower moment, stuck it back in the fire, melted it, and filled all the cracks in my crystal. If that makes any fucking sense. I don't know. It's, um... It's indescribable. It really is. And I think the, the extreme of it, the utter complete confusion and pain of it versus the total knowing, the acknowledgement, and the healing that takes place just from acknowledging it, just from it, just the acceptance of it alone is healing in and of itself. It has to hurt if it's to heal. Never ending story. I don't know what that little, little creature's name was, but she was freaking adorable. But yeah, it's just an accepting. What do they call that? Radical acceptance? Something like that. Stoicism is cool, but like you feel your emotions here first. And Chinese, I got into ancient Chinese face reading before I got in, like heard about stoicism. So I'm like, uh, I don't know. Messing with your face too much. You gotta be careful. You gotta know, like, what's because those that joy needs to enter your system, right? And that, like, ooh, discernment needs to enter your system. That, like, okay. Because, in case you didn't know, the stuff from the outside that hits you here registers on this first, and then it goes into the system. So if you if you're staying in denial about the, the the situation happening outside of you by keeping stoic, if you're if you take that to a place of denial rather than a just calm observing, you're gonna be in a lot of trouble. And there's so much misinformation out there on stoicism; it's ridiculous. Like if you don't if you don't have a ten volume pack that you're sifting through right now, stoicism is not for you. Because it's not a shutting off of the emotions. People just like, I don't know what the heck. It's not a shutting off of emotions. It's a, a, a calm observing of the emotion. So don't don't shut off the emotion. You're going to find yourself in a lot of fucking trouble. 
<laughs> I can't stress that enough. So unless you're actually studying it, and no, reading one book by Marcus Aurelius does not count. <laughs> Watching some YouTube videos spouting off stoic quotes does not count. <laughs> it's going to give you the wrong impression right off the bat. Ah, and that's going to create a lot of... That's going to create a lot of the opposite of stoicism. Uh, so make sure you study your your taking ups. If you're religious, you want to get into a movement, you want to get into a, a a way of life, freaking get into it. Pick up like 10 volumes of stuff and start reading. Start understanding how it actually works, not how YouTube says it should. Okay? That makes me really nervous. <laughs> Every, the, there's so many people I talk to that are claim to be religious. I mean, they that's what they say. And I'm like, oh, did you read this in your text? And they're like, I didn't read the text. And you're just like, that's a major defense hole. Wouldn't she say? If you don't if you haven't read the textbook that you're you're giving your vital life force energy to that's kind of alarming. Well, I know the basic principles. I don't think you do. Because your your soul, your spirit, your vital life force energy, however you want to paint that picture for yourself, is directly now bound to that text because you willed it so. So investigate. Not only like, you know, the self-defense in the physical manner, but that defense that because this is also physical. So when something enters here, it's going to flood the rest of your system. That's what we need to come into understanding. Within doesn't mean a foo-foo world. It's real in there. There's a heart. There's a mind. There's a tongue. There's an ear. There's an eye. And all of these things are registering. So what we put in is, is uh, important. Now, speaking from a Scorpio Cellian standpoint... Some people need to grind their nose against some of the most horrific things that humanity has ever had to face. And that's just the way we need to do it. And so criticizing that, judging it, and whatever else, not a good idea. We have a we have a role to fill in this fractal situation. And no, you don't get to tell us what we can and can't do with our bodies and our minds. You don't. You don't get a say. So you either come here and you learn some stuff. Or you go in into a false light paradigm. That's totally up to you. If you want to ignore the horrors of humanity, that's your choice. I'm not going to stop you. But that's what you're doing. So, pick up your power. Keep your flame. And until next time, I love you.